Hello and welcome to our live talk on safe and inclusive workplaces, skills to promote safety, health, equality, diversity and well-being. My name is Sean Dignan. I work in the Office of Academic Affairs in ATU in the area of academic policy development. Um, I'm going to be your host uh, for this evening session and live talk. Uh, this evening, I'm joined by John Crummy, uh, Level 6 Online Occupational Safe and Healthy Program Coordinator at ATU Sligo. Welcome, John. And by Dr. Mark Garavan, uh, Senior Lecturer and Coordinator of Applied Social Care and Peer Support Certificate. You're welcome too, Mark. Thanks very much, John. In this session, uh, we will be discussing safe and inclusive workplaces and the necessary skills needed by companies to employ and, and, and employees to promote safety, health, equality, diversity and well-being in the workplace. So just some housekeeping uh, points and, and points of information before we get started. Um, we're not taking questions within this talk. Uh, however, if you do have any questions, please head over to our live Q&A section on our virtual open evening platform and you can submit your questions there and our team will get back to you. So we'll jump right into uh, the detail that everyone is here for. Uh, John, if it's okay, I'm going to start with you. Okay. Uh, and I suppose to start, can you give an overview of occupational safe, uh, safety and health, uh, please? Okay, so occupational safety and health relates to workplace health and safety management, which applies to all workplaces and all industrial sectors. So occupational safety and health practitioners, I'll call them safety practitioners going forward, uh, have a unique opportunity to work or transfer within a, a wide variety of industrial sectors within their role. As an example, over my career, as a safety practitioner, I've worked within or with a variety of industrial sectors, including manufacturing, pharmaceutical, construction, waste management, retail, healthcare, disability and education sectors. So managers and supervisors within all workplaces need to fully understand their duties and responsibilities in relation to current health and safety laws, how to evaluate health and safety risks and ensure they provide a safe and healthy workplace for their employees. So safety representatives within workplaces need the knowledge and skills necessary to perform their functions effectively. Uh, some of our online students that join our courses have been asked by their organizations to act as the health and safety officer and are looking to upskill and obtain a formal qualification within this discipline. Other students that join our courses are looking to, to change career. Example would be tradespeople such as carpenters and electricians within construction or nurses and paramedics within health healthcare, for example, and are looking to upskill and obtain formal qualification within this discipline. Uh, other students that join our course are looking to progress from being a health and safety officer to health and safety manager and are looking to upskill and obtain a formal qualification to do this. Other students that join our courses are looking to, to manage both environmental and health and safety affairs of their organizations and are looking to upskill and obtain a formal qualification for both disciplines. Uh, those who act as safety practitioners, example, managers and supervisors, safety representatives, health and safety officers or managers, health and safety consultants, EHS managers, or even health and safety trainers are required to be competent under current health and safety laws, that is the Safety Health and Welfare at Work Act 2005 and associated regulations. Obtaining formal and recognised qualifications are an essential component to becoming competent. The range of occupational safety and health courses on offer in ATU Sligo can provide safety practitioners with a, with a range of different qualifications at level 6, 7, 8 and 9. Uh, the online courses offered by ATU's Sligo use a flexible part-time learning model that works well for those in full-time employment. ATU Sligo was the first third-level college in Ireland to provide level seven and eight full-time occupational safety and health degree courses in 1995, and the first third-level college in Ireland to offer a full suite of online occupational safety and health courses at level six, seven, eight, and nine. ATU Sligo is the leading provider of third level online occupational safety and health courses in Ireland. I'm back to you, Sean. Great. great. Okay. Thanks for that. That's great detail, uh, John. So clearly there's there's a need for upskilling and you you know you've established that in your answer there and and clearly there's a supply of this upskilling through the um the detail you provided there on on the online courses can can we dig in a little bit into the courses themselves 
You mentioned courses at levels six, seven, eight, and nine in occupational safe and healthy. I suppose I, I suspect our, our listeners tonight are interested in what's the aim of the program, these particular programs? What modules will I study if I'm a student in these programs? You know, what can I expect to learn? Can you give any of that detail, John? Thanks. Yeah. yeah. So um, we currently have six online occupational safety and health courses or programs on offer in ATU Sligo. Three courses at level six and one each at level seven, eight, and nine. The level six courses or programs, we have two single module special purpose award certificates and a higher certificate course or program. So the six courses are as follows. So the first is the level six certificate in occupational safety and health. It's a single semester, 12 week single module course. It's aimed at managers and supervisors who wish to gain knowledge and understanding of their health and safety duties and responsibilities. It is specifically designed for employers, employees, or persons who require knowledge and how to manage workplace health and safety risks. Some of our online students that join our courses decide to begin their online learning experience by completing this certificate first to see if they like online learning mode before committing to one of the two-year programs or courses. Uh, this module is also one of the modules within the higher certificate program, and anyone that completes it is exempt from having to complete it again under that program. The second course will be the level six certificate in health and safety representation. Again, it's a single semester, 12 week single module course. It's aimed at employees who wish to become a safety representative within their organization. The course provides workplace safety representatives with the knowledge and skills necessary to perform their functions effectively in accordance with the Safety and Health and Welfare at Work Act 2005 and the HSA's guidelines on safety representatives and safety consultation. The module is also one of the modules within the Higher Cert program and anyone who completes uh, it is exempt from having to complete it again under that program. The third course then is the level uh, six Higher Cert in Occupational Safety and Health. This two-year course uh, contains 12 modules, uh, which provide students with the fundamentals and, in, and key areas in occupational safety and health, such as foundations for occupational safety and health, hazard identification and risk assessment, safety, safety representation, legislation, etc. It's aimed at anyone who wishes to gain a formal recognised qualification in occupational safety and health, and who wishes to become a safety practitioner, such as a health and safety officer, consultant or trainer, Graduates of this course will be well prepared to assist their employer in complying with occupational safety and health regulatory requirements. The fourth course then is the Level 7 Bachelor of Science in Occupational Safety and Health. This two-year course contains 12 modules which provide students with knowledge in key technical areas such as hazard and risk control, construction safety, occupational hygiene, legislation, etc. It's aimed at safety practitioners such as the health and safety officer who wish to gain a, a level seven bachelor of science degree in occupational safety and health. The course provides an opportunity for safety practitioners to upskill or cross-skill in key technical areas to enable them to advise their employers about health and safety statutory requirements. The fifth course on offer is the level eight honours degree in occupational safety and health management. Uh, this two-year course contains 12 modules, eight which are, of which are mandatory, four which are elective modules, uh, which provide students with knowledge and skills in key health and safety management areas, example, management systems and auditing, project management, training, development, etc. It's aimed at health and safety officers who wish to become a health and safety manager by obtaining an honours degree in occupational safety and health management. Many companies require candidates to have a level A qualification as a minimum in order to become a health and safety manager. And the course provides students with the necessary management knowledge and skills required as a health and safety manager. The sixth course on offer is the level nine Masters in Science in Environmental Health and Safety, EHS Management. And this two year course contains six modules and, a, and an EHS dissertation, which provides students with the ability to manage both environmental and health and safety affairs of organizations. It's aimed at those who wish to manage both roles as well as the capabilities of developing management strategies uh, uh, for these areas compatible with their, their organization's functions or other functions. Many organizations have combined these two compliance management roles and are seeking graduates with qualifications in both disciplines. And it's back to you, Sean.
Grish, yeah, okay. There's, there's a, a significant spectrum there or continuum of, of, of programs available. I suppose uh, a query many, many prospective students might have is what, what's the entry requirement? Um, and is there opportunity, for instance, for things like recognition of prior learning if they've previously maybe earned a qualification or worked in this area? I, I know a lot of that detail will be in, in, in um, the, the, the website that supports this virtual open evening. Mm. Can you give just a kind of a, a quick overview of typical entry? Entry requirements. Yeah. So, yeah, not a problem. So, the, the two single module special purpose award level six certificates do not have minimum entry requirements. Um, the level six higher certificate in occupational safety and health, minimum entry requirements here is a leaving certificate or equivalent. Uh, applicants with other qualifications and with relevant occupational safety and health experience will also be considered for entry via RPL. Um, the level seven uh, uh, Bachelor of Science in Occupational Safety and Health minimum entry requirements here, excuse me, are 120 credits at level six, example, having a higher certificate uh, in irrelevant discipline or equivalent. Uh, and equivalent here could be example, a trade qualification or paramedic qualification. Uh, the level eight uh, honors degree in Occupational Safety and Health Management, the minimum entry requirements is ordinary degree, level seven, 60 credits, so you need to have a 60 credits at level seven to be able to get into this uh, in health and safety or, or relevant discipline with experience. Uh, applicants with other qualifications and with relevant occupational safety and health experience will also be considered for entry via RPL. So that's level eight. You need to have a, a level seven okay. occupational safety and health degree uh, to get in typically. Uh, level nine in masters in EHS management, the minimum entry requirements in is a level eight honors degree in science or in engineering or in a related area. Applicants with level eight honors degree in other areas must demonstrate appropriate experience in the EHS area. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, it, it's clear then that there's opportunity for everyone here to get on the ladder, even if you don't have formal qualifications. And if you do have some qualifications, potentially you can kind of move up the ladder a bit quickly. So that, that's that's great to hear. Very briefly as well, John, in terms of if, I, if a student does apply or you know uh, pursues one of these courses, typical time commitment per week in terms of lectures? Do they have to be available at a certain time or are lectures recorded and you know can be played back later? I'm sure, that's a query a lot of people have. Any on-campus days, those kinds of things? Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah. So, the, yeah. So, you know, the lectures, sorry, to give you a background, yeah, the lectures are delivered through uh, live online lectures ranging from one to two hours long, depending on the, the credits applying to the module. Um, attendance at live lectures is not mandatory, but we do encourage it as it's very beneficial through sp student participation. Uh, all live lectures are recorded so students can look back at recordings anytime afterwards to accommodate those who cannot attend live lectures, example, shift workers. And um, the single module level six certificates have one lecture per week. And it's usually approximately two hours long, uh, delivered in the evenings, usually between the hours of 6 and 9 p.m. The two-year courses typically complete three modules per semester, each semester over four semesters, okay. and have three uh, one to two hour long lectures per week, depending on the module's credit allocation. Students should typically allow learning time of around five to six hours per week per module being studied at, for level six, seven, and eight courses or 14 hours per week per module on the level nine course. Okay, so that there, there is a commitment there. Yeah, yeah. Be aware uh, of that. And then the assessments then are typically 100% continuous assessment or a blend of continuous assessment and final exam. And a dissertation is also completed as part of the level nine master's course. Okay. Um, the the two-year courses typically have workshops held on campus at ATU Sligo one day each semester. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. And I, you've mentioned these already, John, but just as a sort of a wrap up on, on this particular section, you know, uh, briefly, you mentioned some kind of job roles and titles um, and um, career opportunities, you know, that these open up. Could you just maybe briefly just outline those again without necessarily mentioning the courses, but just, mm. you know, if you're interested in becoming or doing, you know, what, what kind of things are there? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, so. Job opportunities, look, managers and supervisors wish to gain knowledge and understanding in occupational health and safety responsibilities. Um, 
employees who wish to become safety representatives, anyone who wishes to gain a form recognised qualification in occupational safety and health, and who wish to become a safety practitioner, example, health safety officer or consultant. Uh, health safety officers wish to progress to become a health safety manager. Uh, those who wish to progress to become EHS managers. And then uh, occupational safety and health offers career opportunities with, within all industrial sectors, such as manufacturing, pharmaceutical, construction, waste management, retail, healthcare, disability, education sectors. I'll give you some examples. Right, and um, some career opportunities for graduates include becoming health and safety trainers, consultants, health and safety officers, health and safety managers, EHS managers, health and safety authority inspectors, or you can go on to do specialist roles such as becoming an ergonomist or an occupational hygienist. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. And I mean, it's not an area I'm, I've am i worked in or overly familiar with, but what I do know is that it's an area that's growing and it's not it's not going away. It's becoming, uh, you know, uh, I suppose a, a bigger area in all of those industries uh, you mentioned, um, you know, and underpinned by legislation and, and, and uh, regulation and whatnot. So it's a, it's a very interesting area. I'm going to, John, thanks very much for that. And I'm going to switch to Dr. Mark Garavan now. Um, because I want to also find out during the session about um, the ATU programs in the area of uh, equality, diversity and, and inclusion. So, Mark, I might start, start by asking you a kind of a, a twofold question. First of all, can you um, can you give a, a quick overview of the area of equality, diversity and in inclusion? Um, any innovations in industry in respect of that, the need for upskilling in that area and then we might go into then the specific offering of the MA in equality, diversity and inclusion at ATU, um, if that's OK, Mark. I yeah, don't... sure. Thanks very much, Sean. And apologies to viewers if I sound a bit croaky. I've got one of these wonderful summer head codes at the moment that have just come on me, so nothing I can do. Um, I mean, obviously, people are familiar with equality, diversity and inclusion. I mean, they're very culturally common and commonly spoken about at the moment. So we've responded to that by producing a master's programme. Uh, that addresses the complexity of those issues. So the programme is, we think, really innovative and very exciting. And by the way, for people who are viewing this, if you want to get a quick snapshot of the programme, we have quite a nifty YouTube video, which you can look up uh, if you just search for MA in Equality, Diversity and Inclusion, ATU, Mayo, you'll get it. And that'll give a very nice graphic overview of the programme. Um, so I think maybe the context, Sean, is obviously a changing Ireland. Um, much greater cultural diversity, demographic changes, immigration, and all of the political fallouts that we're seeing over the last few weeks. So this is a really, it's really important that we get to grips intellectually and in terms of practice with the implications of the changes in the world around us. So that's what the MA is designed to deal with. And I mean, I'll jump straight to describing it so that we just move on and not delay too long. Um, the title is Transformative Practices in Equality, Diversity and Inclusion. That's very important. It, we're not teaching equality, diversity and inclusion as a kind of a rote learning thing. What we're really interested in is transformation. So transformation in two directions. One for the learner themselves, for the students, that they undergo transformation. Because all of us 100% struggle with issues of prejudice and assumptions about other people. That's universal. So it's not a course in kind of moral righteousness. It's about addressing that and trying to find the tools to work through all of that. And then transformation directed outwards. The program is very outward faced, facing, very community facing. And we want our students to be engaged in community projects right from the outset and working together and with communities to bring about transformation in the direction of greater inclusion and greater equality. So the program is for those who are activists, who want to bring about change, in organizations or communities, or even for themselves personally. So it's very, very action oriented uh, and very rich in that sense, in terms of the connections and networkings that we hope to achieve for grad for students within the program itself. Okay, so Mark, can I ask you, um, this is an MA, so entry requirements uh, to get onto this master's program? And yeah, I, ideally, we would want to see that people already have a degree. We, the, the discipline is not that important because we think equality diversity applies across the board, no matter what the no matter what role you're coming from or what academic background you're coming from. But we're very open to RPLing, in other words, looking at people's prior experiential learning, especially interested in those people who have direct experiences of inequality and exclusion. We really want to have a home for those people doing this course so that the course will empower them to make transformation as well. 
Okay, a, a couple of kind of quick ones, and I know the detail is 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 online and likely in your video. Mm -hmm. Time commitment in terms of lectures per week. You know, do I have to attend? Uh, you know, live? Can I watch them later? Yeah, it's 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 a combination of things. So we have each semester, each academic term has two residential weekends over two days, so that we bring everyone together because we want to do a lot of group work and skills and so on. But generally, the course is delivered online. It involves two half days a week from two o'clock until six, but because it's online, it's all recorded. So people are working and they're otherwise engaged. They can look back and view that online. Obviously a bit like what John said, we prefer people to be there live. It just leads to better engagement, but it's not always going to be possible. So at least the advantage with the online delivery is that you can have recordings and people can look back on it. You, you, you talked about, you know, changing world and new culture and, and you know, uh, ch changes, that, you know, many changes. Is it, Career opportunities for graduates, you know, are they definitive at this stage um, or are they emerging all the time? They're emerging all the time. I mean, it's hard to answer that. Obviously, lots of organizations now, corporate and community sector and statutory, are looking at the question of equality, diversity and inclusion and making and understanding that they need to pay some attention to that. So clearly there's a lot of positions there for people to be the change agents or to bring that about. Um, so that's a clear area. We're interested in community activism and the graduates getting yeah. into community transformation at whatever level, but we're also conscious of the difference between employment and work. So lots of people we expect, well, we expect all our graduates to work in this area, yeah. whether they're employed in a formal way is a different thing. Uh, so we're looking to the 21st century when our concepts of employment begin to fragment and break down. And we're needing to look at social cohesion and other ways of doing things in the social world that's rapidly changing. And if for no other reason than because of technology and so on. So we're looking to how, how do we create a more human world in which we're happy to live in? I mean, that's really what this is about. So this is a this is an MA for activists, okay, for dreamers, for people who want to make a difference, for people who want to change. That that's what we're looking for. That's that yeah, that's an excellent summary. Thanks for that, Mark. Look, we're going to we're going to wrap up there. Uh, I want to thank you both, John and Mark, uh, for being our panelists this evening. Um, lots of really good information shared there. And um, for anyone um, that'd like to watch back, uh, we'll we'll be uploading this uh, live talk onto our virtual opening open evening webpage, and you can watch it back, uh, you know, at your leisure. If you're interested in doing any course from our EDI and occupational safe and healthy uh, occupational safety and health area, you can visit our course search section on our virtual open evening platform and you can find out more about the programs, how to apply. And if you have questions regarding this talk, as I said earlier, you can head over to the QA section and our team will uh, be available to answer your, your, your questions until nine o'clock this evening or so if you're on this live session. So thanks for joining us and I hope you enjoy the rest of your virtual open uh, evening. Thanks very thanks much. Thanks very much.